to another Al's Guitars short take. Tonight we're going to be looking at something completely different, and this is going to be a viewer participation episode. What I've got here is a Thomas Halley banjo. It was ordered in 1969 by its original owner. Past that, I know very little about the history of this instrument, which is unusual for something I would present to you on this channel. And what I'm hoping is that through the comments, Maybe I'm going to find out something more than the specifications that I know of it. And what I do know of it is this thing is killing my lap. It is so incredibly heavy. On the scale, 12 pounds, 8 ounces. This is a uh, chrome over brass uh, assembly. Everything is of very high quality on this unit. It has a, a, a unique... Uh, rim that I'm not familiar with and I'm not a banjo expert by any stretch but this almost appears to be a phenolic or a reinforced phenolic ring it appears as if, though it's mahogany on the inside and a lot of these would be plywood in some shape that they were, were mold pressure molded this one appears to have almost like a little stippled pattern and to me, that means that it came out of a mold. It looks exactly like some of the fiber gears that you would see if you're a gearhead in uh, old time hot rods or old time vehicles. It also, the pattern on this, and I don't know how you can connect this, looks exactly like an Emerson oscillating fan from the 30s. The gear inside the fan looks just like this does. Anyway, it's a, uh, a, a very unique banjo, completely handmade as to the part that obviously there's a lot of assembling that goes on in a banjo. But it is a flamed maple neck. On the front, you have a uh, very nice ebony fretboard. It has a menagerie of inlays all over it, and they, they seem to come from uh, different... Uh, manufacturers, you know, everybody hearts and flowers for Gibson. There's certain things that you see that are a trend, but this has a, a variety of things, dots and little whirls, and it does have some hearts on it, uh, some curly cues. It, it's, it's got quite a bit of stuff going on there. You've got some diamonds. Uh, the maker's name has been, uh, in a pearl, has been written or engraved into the pearl piece, and I know why. He normally would have put his name here on the truss rod cover, and it is on the truss rod cover, but that was on the inside. The original owner's uh, name was re perhaps requested, so the other side of it has the original owner's name engraved on it, since it's a custom instrument. Uh, it is a very, in my estimation, I think it's a pretty nice sounding uh, unit. It's got a, a solid tone ring, which really harks back to the old days of the banjo as opposed to the drilled out tone rings. Uh, on our test equipment here, it rang out at 1 meter 97 decibels. I mean, it is loud. And all banjos are loud. Boy, it's, it's, I wanted to have that in the record books just to compare it to what, uh, say, a Dreadnought or a Jumbo guitar uh, will do. But it really rings out true. Um, also, let's see if there's anything else I wrote down about the instrument. Uh, everything is brass. It has, oh, it has a Grover uh, bridge, floating bridge on it. Currently is wearing a Remo uh, banjo skin. But what I really want to know is, does it, do any of you know more about this instrument than I do? And, and I should say, I did that little intro uh, coming in here. I have never played a banjo in my life. I am just totally winging it. different websites from the banjo manufacturers and it is uh, currently set up exactly to their specifications and they all seem to share about the same so it's a, it is uh, neck is true straight very very well made very very well crafted I wish I knew more about the person uh, from what I know uh, Thomas Halley was a repairman in Kentucky somewhere uh, supposedly there are quite a few of his uh, instruments that float around from time to time. Uh, it does bear some of the trademarks. Uh, the, in addition to the ebony fretboard, you have a uh, marquetry 
on both sides of the, of the neck. Uh, the, the tuners confirm the late 60s diagnosis of when it was uh, ordered. They are star planet tuners of a variety that would have been made in that time. Anyway, that's about all I want to say about this thing. Uh, please, in the comments, if you have anything that you can add to the history of this, I would love to know about it. I really would. I'll pass it along. I will tag your comment and move it to the top so that uh, other people can see what you're doing. Anyway, from all the people at Al's Guitars, we thank you very much for tuning into this series and hope you enjoy it.